What up though, I'm Merce, Hip Hop DX, and this is The Breakdown. Honestly, I had a couple more weeks of paternity leave left, but obviously Mr. West had other plans for me. So, is Kanye okay? The Unleash the Beast Theory. Let's break it down. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, normally, y'all know I like to start with a little history. But if you don't know who Kanye is, you're in the wrong place, friend. Let's get straight to it. There's slavery, Trump, and some more mess. But let's not forget why we're all here, the music. And although our boy is never cold, things were relatively chill in the world of Mr. West. And they always are, it seems, until there's some new music to sell. But a couple of weeks ago, the king of tweet started letting his almighty Twitter fingers fly once again. He let us know that along with a few of his other artists, he too will be releasing a new project in June. And from there, the floodgates were wide open. He started tweeting inspirational things like, everything you do in life stems from either fear or love. Be transparent as possible. Stop setting plays. Stop playing chess with life. Make decisions based on love, not fear. When you first wake up, don't hop right on the phone or the internet, unless it's to watch the breakdown, or even speak to anyone for even up to an hour if possible. Just be still and enjoy your own imagination. It's better than any movie. Pretty cool, right? I fuck with everything he said. But then he tweeted his endorsement of right-wing African-American journalist Candace Owens. And soon after that, hip hop shock jock Ebro breaks the news. I use quotes for many reasons. First, Hot 97 is not a news source when it comes to politics. Ebro is not a journalist, but that's another breakdown. And finally, Kanye is not a political figure. So his political opinion is not really breaking news. It's more like gossip, especially when the source is recounting a private unrecorded conversation. The next day, after that private conversation with Mr. West, Ebro tells the world that Ye said he loved Donald Trump and proceeds to tear him down live on the air. Here's an excerpt. This Candace lady telling Black Lives Matter people that they're whiners, she doesn't know the neighborhoods these people come from. Absolutely not. You're talking to mothers, people who have lost family members, sons, daughters. Are you kidding me? And so you're just playing around. He was like, well, that's what I want to have. I want to have open dialogue. I said, Kanye, the conversation's been open, bro. You're just not a part of it. And you're just chiming in right now because you got an album coming out. See, now we're talking. That's facts. Well, I just don't want to be uh, uh, not able to say the things that I think. There's a lot of things that I feel and I just want to say them. And I'm using my platform to say them. I said, look, that's fair. Okay. But finish the thought. Okay, just in that little bit right there, there's so much. Let's just start with them saying Candace Owens isn't familiar with Black Lives Matter because she's not from that community. Wrong. She's from Stanford, Connecticut, where just as recently as last summer, the local PD was filmed using excessive force. Then Ebro starts saying that Kanye is just saying this to promote his album, to which co-host Peter Rosenberg, also not a journalist, says facts. Once again, wrong. I get it, Dr. Dre is not a doctor, lit doesn't mean anything's on fire, and facts doesn't usually mean facts. Though we all may think it and believe it to be true, Kanye West himself has never said that he's doing this to sell an album, so it's not a fact. My bigger point is, once a black person or someone in the hip hop community, whether it be Ye or Candace Owens, says something contrary to the stereotypical norm, they are instantly not from the hood or crazy or trying to get a buzz going. How come they just can't have a different opinion? I'm black, into hip hop, and from a single parent household. Grew up in a black neighborhood, and I don't get down with the Black Lives Matter movement, and I don't get down with Trump or Fox News. There's room for everyone, and we can't snatch away people's blackness because we disagree, nor as I've said on multiple occasions, can we kick people out of the culture. Ebro then goes on to say that Kanye shouldn't leave open-ended statements out there like that and Ye actually takes Ebro and some of his wife's advice and further fleshes out his Trump love statement via Twitter. You don't have to agree with Trump, but the mob can't make me not love him. We are both dragging energy. He is my brother. I love everyone. I don't agree with everything anyone does. That's what makes us individuals, and we have the right to independent thought. There was also this one. Love who you want to love. That's free thought. I'm not even political. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. 
As a married man, this was my favorite. My wife just called me and she wanted me to make this clear to everyone. I don't agree with everything Trump does. I don't agree 100% with anyone but myself. All of that seems pretty sane. Not my beliefs, but hey, it didn't seem like the words of a lunatic. Yes, by his own admission, he is on meds. Did he forget to take them the day that he talked to Ebro? Maybe. But did that make him say something out of character? Something he regretted? No. He didn't change his stance at all. In fact, he only further solidified the soundbite via tweet. He's not a crazy man saying something, then apologizing, or rambling incoherently, then begging the almighty black Twitter for forgiveness. But still, media continued to attack it. Let's check out what Joe Button and his cronies had to say. I was mad that I had to come in here and speak about this, this fucking coonery today. This, this Kanye West shit. And unfortunately, we do have to address it because it went on all week long. Yeah. Uh, Before you begin, I w want to note that his album is one month away. He's testing the waters right now. He's only going to get louder and more annoying for the next 31 days. But see, that's my problem. Like, why does Kanye only talk to people and talk to the public when he wants to sell something? Because he's a selfish fuck. Right. So I don't... We It's just time to... We just got to move on from Kanye, honestly. First of all, I take issue with the misuse of the term coonery or cooney. Cooney was originally used to describe a minstrel type person in blackface, bugging his eyes out, dancing a jig to entertain whites. But an effective buzz is generated by stimulating your core fan base. And for Kanye, his core is still predominantly black. So Cooney wouldn't benefit him at all. In fact, his antics are said to have lost him over 10 million Twitter followers and quite a few stands threatening to burn their Yeezys. Give it away! Give what away? The Yeezys! I want to burn every single one of... What? Anyway, on to my next point. Rory, the white gentleman in the crew, goes on to spew his false prophecy that Ye is only going to get louder and more annoying over the next 31 days. Well, Rory, it's been over two weeks since your post and the TMZ incident, and he hasn't gotten any louder or more annoying. Then Maul says, why does Kanye only speak to us when he has music coming out? Because he's a fucking musician and entertainer. He's not our friend that needs to check in with us. This is his job, and when he's off the clock, he's off the clock. He clocks in and gets crazy, expresses himself, because that's his job, to entertain and engage the public. You have to use your discernment to figure out what's real and what's fake and whether you want to tune in or not. This rap shit has been pro wrestling basically since the inception. Everybody is putting on a show to some extent. If Ye doesn't have a match coming up, then what's the point of getting us all riled up? But right now, he's on the verge of his own personal WrestleMania. So of course he's gonna go super hard. I have a problem when, when this man that most of hip hop recognizes as a genius, when we're starting to find out <laughs> and also as someone that claims to be so forward thinking and on to the next thing and constantly talking about streaming an interview why the fuck do you give a fuck about radio many of y'all thought Ye was a musical genius but because you think he's off his rocker or he says something on twitter that offended you you say he's not a musical genius anymore but you haven't actually heard any of his new music alright there were a couple of joints the infamous poopy scoop which was an obvious troll, but the beat was fire. Then there was the T.I. song. Not the best, but for me it was nice to see mainstream artists create something spontaneous and let the world be a part of it. Also, kudos to T.I. for taking time to check in on his strong friend. That's a Royce the 5'9 quote, and since we've been apart, Royce has released a great album called Book of Ryan. Y'all should check it out. But back to Button Incorporated. Rory says Kanye isn't forward thinking because he's mad about the lack of radio support on the life of Pablo. And if Ye is talking about streaming in the future, he should be past radio. In the interview with Charlemagne, Ye explains he wasn't mad because he felt he needed radio play. He said he was mad because his peers were getting play and he wasn't. It wasn't that he felt radio was important to the success of the album. If Drake or any of his peers was getting more shoe money than him, he'd be upset. If the OVO clothing line was talked about in more fashion magazines than Yeezy, Season, whatever, he'd be pissed. Y'all say y'all missed the old Kanye? Well, here he is. You remember the first album where he says, I spent 400 bucks on this just to be like, nigga, you ain't up on this. The guy who admitted to trying to one up the next man due to his own low self-esteem, he's that same guy, just on the next level multiplied by a thousand. And honestly, that's where you Kanye fans that have recently turned your back on him have me genuinely befuddled. Now you think he's crazy? 
this is where you choose to draw the line? Not when he had all the white America in traffic and on dance floors and in the stadium singing along with this. Not when he thoroughly disrespected a hip hop legend. I am Shakespeare in the flesh, Walt Disney, mm. Nike, Google. Now, who's going to be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Or do you want to marginalize me till I'm out of my moment? Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, fact, Sway? You take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Kanye. I've been doing this more than you. Not when he called himself a god either. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a god. I just told you, that's who I think I am. Would it have been better if I had a song that said, I am a nigga? Or if I had a song that said, I'm a gangster? Or if I had a song that said, I'm a pimp? All those colors and patinas fit better on a person like me, right? But to say you are a god, especially when you got shipped over to the country that you're in and your last name is a slave owner's. How could you say that? How could you have that mentality? Not even when he built a stage, floated over your heads, and called himself a god, then abruptly canceled the whole tour. Get ready to have a field day, press. Get ready. Get ready. Because the show's over. No, none of these shenanigans seem to make Ye supporters as mad as they are now. Is Kanye doing this to sell records? Possibly. But if so, I don't believe it's as conscious of an effort on his part as many people think. Let me explain. Here's my Unleash the Beast theory. Have you ever seen a bull riding competition and how they keep those huge bulls pent up until it's showtime and then open the gates and let the bull go wild? I think Kanye is the bull and he's always bucking and full of energy in his pen. In my mind, he's walking around his house or office saying wild shit all the time. That's just who he is to me. But his team and those close to him keep him pent up until it's time to sell a record. And then they just open the gate, but they never know what's gonna come out. It could be. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Or it could be. You hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years, that sounds like a choice. I really feel like they just pull up to media outlets, open the door, let him rip, and pray for the best. But look, whatever it is, no matter how wrong or right you think he is, I believe that it's all coming from the heart. To me, he seems way more rational now than he has been in a while. Yes, he has said some crazy shit in certain moments, but who hasn't? At least these days, he attempts to explain his hyperbolic statements. On his now infamous TMZ appearance, he said 400 years of slavery sounded like a choice, but later on Twitter explained that he knows slavery wasn't a choice, but what he was really trying to say is that black people are still enslaved mentally, blah, blah, blah. His pro-Trump thing, he explained as an extension of his Love Everybody movement, which is just like Jesus or Buddha and all the other holy men. Love thy enemies is a goal I feel we should all strive for. I'm not saying I agree with wearing an MAGA hat, but at least I can kind of see where he was coming from. But all this shit a few years ago about him being a god or the new Shakespeare or better than the Beatles, that's when I jumped off the wagon. I couldn't even fathom that bullshit and he never really bothered to qualify or support any of those statements. But back to now, these days, he seems to be walking the walk. Here, take a look. I love you and I want to give you a hug. I feel like you want to fight me right now, but I love you. I don't, I don't fight with my fist, man. I've been through that. This is what I'm saying. So if I come over there, you're not going to fight me? No, I'm not going to hit Kanye West and TMZ. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Would you put that video up? I mean, no, oh. keep it on. I'm Wait. saying, could you post this whole video yeah. of our interaction? Definitely. Hey, do you mind if I give you a hug, bro? No, no, not, not at all, right. man. It's all hey. love. It's all love, man. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kanye. Yeah. You're the best. That doesn't look like a crazy, dangerous person to me, but everyone is taking one or two quotes and running with them. Watch the whole fucking Charlemagne interview. Read more than one tweet. Many people accuse Kanye of not thinking or having an uninformed opinion, but they are guilty of the same exact thing. They read or watch a little bit of something and then they take their emotionally charged, ignorant ass opinion to social media. Maybe you think his pro-Trump statements are dangerous. I don't really think so, but let's just say that they are. How is it any more dangerous than the misogyny, murder, and drug abuse endorsed by rappers on the regular? 
If his political views are hurtful, then so are those other things. And before you use the, it's just music excuse, I'm not talking about their songs. Just check out some of these guys' Instagram stories and you'll see them acting out and reinforcing that negativity in real life. But why single out Kanye? Because it's easy to ostracize and demonize someone exhibiting the most extreme symptoms of the bigger problem. And the bigger problem with rappers, humans, and yes, even the president, is the lack of accountability. If Kanye should be held accountable for his words, so should every other rapper. But if I can take Cardi B openly endorsing being a blood with a grain of salt, no matter how many tens of thousands of lives have been lost due to gang violence in our community, then I'm taking Kanye's Trump endorsement with the same grain of salt. And me personally, no artist gets a dollar from me as long as they're overwhelmingly supporting negativity. And are they not hip hop? Does it mean the music sucks? No, I just don't agree. But when you people start calling them dangerous or a threat just because they have a different opinion, that's a slippery slope. To me, that's the same place that bullshit like the travel ban and the anti-dreamer legislation comes from. The most dangerous things said in this whole media storm were not said by Kanye, but by people like Joe Budden and Ebro who made statements like this. When you see people in the streets screaming at the top of their lungs, my life matters, don't kill me, I and can't your breathe. first response is, you're a whiner? I can't have a conversation with you. There's no talk. They want to write people off, and that is dangerous. When you do that, you close the door on progress. You alienate someone, you shame them. That leads to anger, hate, and violence, the dark side. But seriously, that is an extremely childish and ignorant stance. I may strongly disagree, but hey, I respect their right to free speech and I hope that they respect mine because that, that keeps the door open and creates room for discussion, possible compromise and real lasting change. Honestly, it seems like Ebro and Joe Button didn't get the exclusive, so they ran with their own rants and sensational stories because it's their job to create relevant content. So they got on their high horse and cut Ye down but they too are being extreme to create a buzz and get views. The same thing they accused him of. You can't criticize him for using controversy as a marketing tool when you do the same thing week in and week out. That's weak. And speaking of weak, all the name calling and shaming is super weak. What has he done to deserve the disrespect? Kanye is a father and a husband and still a great artist. You're in opposition to some of his political views? Cool, but why be so disrespectful about it? Nothing he said recently has been with any malice or ill intent. So why not respond like T.I. or John Legend? Respectfully denounce or boycott it. Be vocal, but be humane. And please, please, if you're not his personal doctor, kill all that off his meds, he's crazy shit. Which brings me to our last clip. I'd like to play an excerpt from Dave Chappelle's Inside the Actor Studio interview, where he speaks a lot about the pressures of being a celebrity. You should watch the whole thing, but this is the most powerful part to me. Ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy, they're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. Once again, what's dangerous is everyone calling him crazy. He's an artist, he's eccentric. He's never been a political mastermind. His talent is music. So let's wait to hear the music before we cast judgment. If you have to judge something, judge the art because none of us know him well enough personally to judge him. So is Kanye okay? I say fuck yeah. You might say fuck yeah. But hit the comments, let's hear what you gotta say. And as always, for more music and news, check out hiphopdx.com.